Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very special video. I am doing a video about Fanola. You guys know I'm working with Fanola, have been for years. I am one of their insiders. And today my client is going to let me do her hair. We're gonna be using their nine levels of lip powder lightener. And I'm actually showing you this a week almost later after we shot it. Um, we ended up bringing her in today and she had very processed hair before we did it, but we did it anyway. And we wanted to get the orange out. You'll see in the video you're about to watch. We ended up taking her hair, bleaching it again on top of already damaged hair. I say don't do that unless you're at a professional and you give them permission. If you are the professional, don't just do it without the client's permission. She was aware of everything. We had uh, three choices and she'd rather stay blonde, get that orange out. So we did that and then her hair was still beautiful beautiful color she loves the color she loves the roots uh, shadow we did all that but she called and she's like my hair feels dry can we do something so I brought her in and we do a treatment I offer where I do Olaplex one um, in water put it all over the hair put the number two on top of it and then I take and let that sit for 20 minutes shampoo condition and after I'm done I use Fanola's Nutri Care Restructuring Mask which I will leave all these things down below that I'm talking about but today is a Fanola video so definitely check it out I have a discount code below Brett 10 the restructuring line I'll show you pictures of that and what I'm talking about um the no no yellow shampoo conditioner that's also a thing we love we do the pre-tone with that's good to keep her really like not brassy and then also I'm gonna show you pictures inserted of the nine levels of lip no yellow powder lightener that I love I always have at least six or seven tubs of it always ready to go. It's good to have in your arsenal because you never know what kind of situations you need. Vanilla is very, very, very conditioning and I was never scared to use it when I have somebody with a lot of damage and we do need to overlap. So look how beautiful her hair is. We did the Olaplex treatment. We also did the NutriCare restructuring mask underneath the dryer for 40 minutes. I usually do 20, we want to give it an extra few minutes. And this is what we're left with. She loves it, we ended up making a big chop and we're gonna get her healthier. She has a, a regimen we're gonna do, um, a few appointments booked out. We're gonna do just the roots, no overlapping, and get her hair to just grow and get healthier and healthier. All right, if you wanna check this video out, and I know you do, definitely make sure you watch it. Keep watching all my videos if you haven't and if it's your first time. Definitely subscribe, hit the post notification bell on and all that good stuff and come back every Monday and Friday for a new tutorial. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Hello guys, welcome back. So today I have this amazing Fanola video for you guys. I'm using Fanola's Fiber Fix in my lightener and I'm using Fanola's Nine Levels of Lift Violet Powder that is no yellow lightning powder. I love this lightener. Out of all the Fanola lighteners, this is definitely one of my favorites. It's hard to choose between which one I like the most. Of course, they have the 24K Keratin Lightning Powder, and they also have the original No Yellow Lightener, which was the Cream Lightener. Um, the best thing about the Nine Levels of Lift Powder Lightener, it packs a punch, but it is still not too damaging on the hair. For example, today my client, she came to me about three days before we shot this video, and she had a lot of orange. You can see the before. This was not as bad as it was. So when she came to me three days before we shot this video, she had a really, really brassy, orange, chunky, whatever you want to call it, throughout her entire head. And as you can see, the hairdresser, I never down another hairdresser, but the hairdresser told her that those were layers that she put into her hair, but really that was breakage. So I told her, we toned it. I said, if you really want to get rid of this orange, we're going to have to darken you and make you to a level six, seven, and you're going to feel brunette when you really want to go lighter. So she knew out of the options, let's just do it. So I brought her in three days later, and this is the, what you're watching right now. Some people might wonder why we didn't give her hair some time and do treatments and wait a few months or a year to go and lighten it up and get that orange out of there. Well, there's one of two reasons. 
One, she was very uncontent with it. She hated looking in the mirror at herself. Hair is so important. It can build your confidence, but it can also break your confidence. If you don't feel good about your hair or you think it's ugly, you're gonna walk around with that negativity. It's gonna feed you that negativity. So we had to get rid of it. And whether we waited six months, six days, three days like we did, or a year of treatments, it doesn't matter. Once that hair has been compromised, it is compromised. And the only thing to do is just get it over with and then start nursing the hair back to make it feel good. But I just want to let you guys know that once hair is bleached and damaged, the only way you can get it healthy again is by cutting it off. This whole, you know, oh, your hair will get healthy again from this, this and that. Your hair will feel better, but your hair will never go back to true health. Just keep that in mind. So I grabbed my nine levels of a lift with my No Yellow Lightening Powder because I knew that Fanola always has really, really good lighteners that are not that harsh on the hair. And I feel very confident putting this lightener on top of already previously bleached damaged hair. I always get crap about overlapping, but listen, that's the only way that you're going to get the goal is by putting lightener on top of that hair. So also I wanted to mention, I know you can see a glare and it looks really weird and the quality is not the best on this video. That is because I touched the screen, somehow it got touched throughout the day. I shot other videos this day as well and I never noticed it. Um, so yeah, ignore that. This is still really good content that I feel you guys can learn something from and I didn't want to scratch it so I'm just putting it out like this. I hope you guys understand. Hey son. Don't need your warm anymore Cause my curtains will always be drawn Be drawn And I wanna be honest with you So a couple things I wanted to mention. So if you noticed in the beginning of the video, I did mix up two bowls of lightener. I used 20 volume in the one bowl, the pink bowl, and the other bowl I used 10 volume, if you're wondering what that's for. So she does have some ends that are already nice and probably like a level eight, nine that needs to be kicked a little bit. So I don't wanna totally fry her hair off. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to see, it's not really picking up on the camera because I'm moving quickly and whatnot. But I am actually sometimes on most of those lighter ends taking the 20 volume on the regrowth and then if you see me all of a sudden you know reach back for more supply of product that's probably because i'm grabbing the other brush and hitting the 10 volume on the end so i'm using two different volumes of developer and that is a big trick when you're doing you know processes like this where you want to kick some of the ends that are already lightened and compromised and you need to kick them a little bit but you really want to focus the main higher developer on the fresh hair that's virgin healthy and darker this is the best way to do it. Sometimes you got to do more work by taking two different, you know, brushes and doing two different applications per foil or weaving out, you know, the lighter pieces and kicking them out. Whatever you have to do to keep the hair healthy, don't be lazy, ignorant, and just throw, you know, 30, 40 volume just roots to end and not care. Also, on her dropouts, I am using the one with 20 volume as well just to kick them. I sometimes will bump it up to a higher developer when I'm going lighter or something like that. But over the years of doing hair, I really don't like teasing the dropouts. And the only time I will do it is if somebody's basically a level six or lighter because I feel like it never, ever, ever gets as light as the baby lights that are closer to the scalp with the heat because it doesn't get the heat from the scalp and it's usually on less time. So I don't like doing it, but if I usually do do it, it's just to get them a little bit lighter towards the end of the process of going lighter, a few sessions in, and then sometimes I always bump it up to 30 for that because it's not on as long and it's also not getting the heat. But sometimes if I wanna kick the ends that have not been overlapped in a while and you know, mineral buildup, or chlorine or brass anything like that where you want to pop them a little bit so it tones evenly and sucks up the toner again after a while of not overlapping sometimes i'll just use a lower developer like 10 volume so it depends on the situation now we're making our way up the side of the head on a slight diagonal and i'm also going to be doing some money pieces around the front i am doing very very small tightly packed baby lights i want to get as much lift as possible and keep it very healthy with my lower developer. The key to getting great lift is not using a higher developer, it's actually lowering your developer and doing smaller amounts of hair in your sections. 
You can still have dimension, leave hair in between, whatever you have to do, so be it. But in your actual foil, even if you're doing a chunkier highlight, use lower amounts of hair. And what I mean is a little amount. Don't take thick amounts of hair and put it in the foil that you're actually applying the lightener on. You don't have to do that to make a bigger, chunkier highlight. You could still do the same thin amount of hair that I'm doing for a regular chunky highlight. You just keep the hair amount in the foil thin so it saturates very, very well and it processes evenly. process for a total of 45 minutes keeping a close eye on the whole processing um, and then I'm gonna bring her over to the sink and really thoroughly wash her out clarifying it mixing clarifying Kenrose shampoo with the Olaplex number no. four shampoo I like doing this sometimes to really make sure all that lightener is out of the hair especially with somebody's hair who's compromised comb her out split her down the middle into two sections and I'm going to root shadow her using Retkin Shade ZQ 5N, 5NA. And we're going to do a slight shadow, one to two inches, doing the teardrop effect, where I bring it further down in the back and leave it higher up around the front. I am going to slice the front money piece area out and leave that until the last five minutes after it processes for about 10. For total timing, we'll leave it on about 15 minutes roughly. Usually I'll leave my smudges on 15 to 20 minutes, but I really want to tone her down since she lifted really well. I didn't think she would lift that well since she's naturally darker, but she lifted pretty, pretty good. People always ask me why do I do the Olaplex number no. 2 or a conditioning treatment on the mids and ends when I'm doing a rooting or root tap, shadow or smudge, whatever you want to call it. And it's because you want to have extra protection knowing that there's a barrier. Especially for the fact that I use Shades EQ, which can be very runny and liquidy. Um, it literally can drop off of that brush and hit the bottom of the hair. And we don't want that. But if you do, and it has happened to me before, if something does scrape the, one of those ends by accident, having that barrier there, I quickly come rinse it off or take a towel and wipe it off. It's just ensuring that there's a barrier. Think of hair as a sponge. When it is wet and saturated with conditioner or water, it's soaked up. It's not going to be able to suck anything else up. Not saying go and put color on the ends and let it sit for a few minutes. You have to wipe it off immediately. It could possibly stain, but your chances are very much lower by doing this and rinsing it out quickly if that does happen. But I also like to do, uh, what's the saying? Kill two birds with one stone. So while she is getting rooted, she is also sitting there and getting an Olaplex Part 2 treatment, which is needed after using Part 1 in the lightener. I know I get a lot of questions. Sometimes people say, aren't you supposed to do that and shampoo directly after rinsing the foils? That is what the rules say, but it is okay to break the rules as long as you know them. I've been doing this for my whole career, three years almost now, and I've never had an issue with it. It's not going to close the cuticle enough that it won't tone. I've even left the Olaplex number two on the end sometimes, 
if I want to sit them up and they have really long hair and I want to make sure everything is toned thoroughly or I want to do a mids toner on top of it and really color melt, I've actually left the Olaplex number two on and just put the toner right above it. It is fine. It's just going to give it a slight barrier, but eventually it will kick its way through. And it's really cool too to do that, especially if you're new and you don't have the budget for, you know, the crystal clear. Back in the day, they didn't have the two ounce Rec and Jade ZQ crystal clear um, bottles. They only had 16 and 32 ounce and it's very pricey. You know, processing solution for a 32 ounce is like eight bucks. This was literally like $30 and I had a 16 ounce and it lasted me three years. Literally just finished it the other day because I barely used it. Um, and if you need it to dilute or if you need it to have a barrier or you want it to do something like that, definitely leave the Olaplex or a conditioning mask on there and put the toner on top of it. It will kick its way through. It's totally fine, especially because Shades EQ does take quickly. We all know this. Um, this will give you more time to apply. Now I'm going to move on as she's processing for this 15 minutes and make her toner. I love making a concoction of great tones. And I really want to keep this color bright, but also keep it ashy enough without being too ashy. So I'm going to mix a whole bunch of neutrals, ashes, and a little bit of warm. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I like mixing and pouring with love. And we're going to give her one of the best colors she's ever seen. So keep watching. Hey, son. Don't need your warm anymore. My curtains will always be drawn, be drawn, and I want to be honest with you, but so cold and so empty there too, am I looking so ugly or looking so strange, oh baby, I told you, come back in my heart. Oh my god, you guys, look at this color. We're totally obsessed, and her hair feels great. A little dry, but that's to be expected. I'm going to bring her back in a couple of days. We're going to do some deep treatments and whatnot. Um, always tell your clients to do that. It's always good to do a standalone Olaplex treatment. I always like to take Vanola's NutraCare restructuring mask, put them under the dryer after I apply it for about 20 to 40 minutes. It always is great to get that heat to actually penetrate the hair cuticle. All right, that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to stop rambling on. I will see you in the next one. Definitely feel free to like, share, subscribe, hit the post notification bell so you're notified every time a video comes out every Monday and Friday. I'll see you in the next one, guys. As always, so long for now.